Today is the day everybody looks forward to. A brand new season of the Fan Showdown. Today is season four, episode one, where I explain all the changes I'm gonna make. You tell me how you feel about that in the comments down below and we decide how exactly we're gonna set up season four. But let me run you through what I got planned and you let me know what you think. First, first thing first though, the fan that's moving forward from season three is obviously the cheater. Uh, the cheater just wrecked last season, did better than the A12X25, placed first place overall. Uh, that was cooling and air cooler, so this season we'll see how well it does in the case fan type cooling. I wanted to do GPU cooling, obviously with the Asus, uh, the Noctua Asus card, but I obviously haven't been able to find one to buy, so maybe next season. But for now we're going to do case fans. And let me explain how we're going to go case fans. You probably know where this is going, we've tested fans like this in the past. Where do I put this? Right there. Let me show you. We will be using this little wind tunnel that Fantex sent me way back when they sent me the T30. It's actually, this thing works really well for what it is. It's a three printed tube assembly that essentially you mount the fan to the front and you mount this anemometer to the back. It's got some ah, veins on the inside to make sure the airflow is nice and smooth. And you simply just measure the speed through, the airspeed through the tube. And that's what I want to do this season. So if you're planning on designing a fan for season four, for season four, you want to try to make something that's optimized for airflow, where in the past it's been static pressure. So fan mounts on the front, no restrictions, through the tube, measure airspeed, Bob's your uncle. So that's the biggest change in season four, I would say. Let me know how you feel about that. Go back together, there you go. Now this last one isn't really a change, but it's something I want to check out and I think you guys might find interesting as, as well. But normally every season I'll take a brand new A12X25 and use it as the test bench just to keep the fan fresh for every season. And normally just use the brown and beige classic A12X25. But this season we're gonna use the brand new Chromex edition. And the reason being I want to show you this part is on the old one, you could see the metal hub underneath the fan disc. On the new one, they closed it off, and I don't know why they did that. The Illuminati. I assume that that metal hub is still there, but if it isn't, that's something that I would find interesting, and I'm sure you'd want to know as well. So I think it's time that we take a brand new Nocto fan, and you know. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. For the most part, it came apart just the same as the original. The only thing I noticed that's different on this Chromax one is there's two tiny little holes in the hub here. And I don't know what purpose that they have. I don't know, if you, if you have any idea, let me know in the comments down below, but they don't exist on the original A12X25 or any brown and beige one that I've taken apart. So I don't know why these were added, but for the most part, the hub seems to be the same. The material seems to be the same. Came apart just the same as every other one. So now let's talk about what new fans we have for season four, episode one. So the first fan that we're gonna look at for season four of the Fan Showdown is the Polytex. And the Polytex was designed by John. John didn't say much when he submitted his fan, just that he doesn't have any fan, you know, design experience like most of us. Uh, but his idea here was that the small blades around the edge of the fan were gonna create like a vortex effect. He's hoping that these little tiny blades along the edge are gonna kind of push the air towards the center, creating like a whirlpool type effect, you know, like water going down a drain. Now John didn't know that season four would be about airflow, but the key thing to airflow is grabbing as much air as possible and accelerating it out the back of the fan. And I think this fan might struggle with that. 
Reason being just the, the small blades are kind of the downside. Next up, we have the RUX 412, which was created by SZ e Pan. Now, Mr. Pan didn't say much about this fan when he submitted it. He just said, um, here's my fan, and I like the fan showdown, so thank you for that. But if I was going to guess the inspiration of this fan, I would say uh, garlic on short final. Reason being is that the hub kind of looks like a garlic clove, and the, the blades kind of look like wings with the flaps extended. So th that's, where, that's where I get that. Then we have the Slim Fan. This was created by Gene. Now, Gene said that when he watches other fan showdown videos, he notices that the fans that do really well, case in point, this one, are fans that have big shrouds that go with them. Now, rather than create a big shroud to go with this fan, he took kind of a different approach. He just made his fan very short so that the stock frame of the A12X25 would kind of act like a larger shroud for it. So, interesting idea with that one. Overall though, I kind of just like the design of this fan. It's small, it looks good in the frame. The blades are like the perfect ratio of thickness to their size. Like there's like a thin line to walk. If the blades are too thin, the print quality kind of sucks and the rigidity goes way down. If they're too thick, then you just have extra mass you don't need. But these ones are almost perfect for the size of the blade. These fan, these blades might be perfect, but this next one is gonna be a bit ambitious. This one is the Pro Fan. Ex ignore its black tinting. We'll get to that in a minute. But the Pro Fan was created by Artem, and yes, this is going to be another gear fan. The inspiration be behind this fan was the last gear fan that we featured on a fan showdown special. I used to have it up here, but I dropped it and it broke. But essentially, that fan was a bunch of planetary gears with little tiny blades in them. And as they went around the hub, the idea was that those little blades were going to move some air through the fan. It made more noise than pretty much anything, but the this one, however, is going to drive a carrier which is going to have planetary gears within it. Those gears are then gonna drive a central hub that has the blades attached to it. Now, Artem says that the gear ratio between the input and the output should be about nine to one, so if the fan in a perfect world could spin as fast as the 2000 RPM input motor speed, that thing would be cooking. I'm not sure if that's going to be possible given there's no bearings. I feel like the drivetrain losses are going to be pretty substantial, but I guess we're, we're just not gonna know until we try. But let's first talk about the airflow test. When looking at all these fans with the addition of the Cheater, they all do pretty, pretty darn good, with the exception being the Polytex, which doesn't do as good. The Polytex just doesn't have the blade area to kind of push that airflow out the back of the fan, you know, kind of accelerate it as you need an airflow fan to do. Most of the air that the Polytex flings around kind of shoots off to the side, so. Now you might have noticed a couple things in the smoke test. One, we added the cheater because that's number one, but another thing being, where is the gear fan? Ah, yes. The gear fan, unfortunately, had um, a few issues. When I first put it together, after it was freshly printed, without the blades on it, I could get it to spin. But when I added the blades onto the center hub, the added drag plus friction just was a little too much. I couldn't get it to just spin for more than a few seconds. I tried a couple things. I initially tried to use white lithium grease like we did last time, printed it out, coated it up, started it, tried to get it to break in, just couldn't do it. Without the blades, did kind of fine, put the blades on and it just stalled out. Then I figured maybe the white lithium grease was just a bit sticky, so I reprinted it since I couldn't get it all cleaned off, and I tried some graphite lubricant, which did work better, and that's why all this stuff is tinted black, because it makes a mess, it gets everywhere. But still, I couldn't get it to work. It worked, essentially I could get the fan to work if it's facing straight up, and to Arden's, you know, to his defense, what he designed it for was the P1, which sits straight up and down, so could have worked for that one maybe, but when I tried to mount it on like the smoke test stand and the wind tunnel, whenever the fan was vertical, it just stalled out. So unfortunately, although this fan is cool, printing or designing a fan and then printing one that can function with the limited output of the A12X25 without any bearings is pretty tricky. I invite anyone to try. I really like these fans. Everybody likes watching them. If you can figure it out, you're a super genius, but for this one, because I couldn't run it on the wind tunnel and do the proper noise test and smoke test, 
pretty much just got a DNF for, for this episode. But it got an A-plus for style. And an A-plus for making everything completely graphite covered. Now the other thing you might have noticed is that the Chromax A12X25 was mysteriously missing. I went back to the classic brown and beige, this one slightly black from all the graphite powder that was on it. But the Chromax one was mysteriously missing. Reason being, I broke it. <sighs> which, which is surprising to me. Now, in theory, these fans should be pretty much identical. Obviously different color, but for the most part, I thought they were pretty much the same. And they probably are. However, I did notice that this one seems a bit more fragile. In a nutshell, what happened is I put a fan on this and then while I was trying to pull it off, I just ripped the motor right off the frame, which I've never ever done on a brown and beige one. I don't think I put any more, any more additional force on this black one than I did all the other brown and beige ones I've used. So I'm not sure why it just blew out like this. I was gonna buy another black one and then I was like, why would I buy another black fan just to break it when I have like a ton of these brown and beige ones sitting around. So we're going back to brown and beige. Let's talk about sound. The Polytex came in around 51 dBA. The Rux 412 came in around 49.8 dBA. The Slim Fan came in around 52.5 dBA. The Cheater came in around 51.5 dBA. And the A12X25 Chromax, I did test it before I murdered it. It came in around 46 dBA. The, the Cheater, still, still the best one to listen to. It's not the quietest, but it does have the, the lowest frequency. It has a, has a very appealing hum to it that I would not mind listening to it all day long over the whine of most of these fans. But let's talk about airflow. That's what really matters in season four. How fast do all these fans push air around. The Polytex came in at 350 feet per minute. The Rux 412 came in at 675 feet per minute. The Slim Fan came in at 601 feet per minute. The Cheater managed a massive 768 feet per minute. And the A12X25 came in at 626 feet per minute. Placing the Cheater still in first place, the Rux 412 in second, the Slim Fan in third, the Pro Fan obviously is gonna be in last, and the Polytex in fourth. The Profane got a bunch of DNFs, but still on the board for now. So there is that as well. It's just so cool. So let's talk Cheater for a minute. This fan is, it destroyed last season. It's still in first place this season. It's going to be very tough to beat. I mean, just look at its numbers compared to everything else. But I think you guys can do it. It's up to you to make sure that the Cheater doesn't cheat its way through season four like it did season three. And remember, you know, if you want to get involved in the fan showdown, all you got to do, head down to the, my description, check out the links. One will take you to my Thinkiverse account where you can find documents that will show you the critical dimensions for the fans, also some models to get you going. And once you get your design all straightened out, all you got to do is send me at least an STL file to the fan showdown at gmail.com. And just like the cheater shows, there's, there's no rules. I mean, if you want to even add bearings and other crazy stuff, make sure you supply a bill of material with that. But if it's not something that's super expensive or hard to get, I might just buy it and try it out too. There's no rules. There's no rules! Let's just start back on. There's one rule!